right, welcome to today's video. I got a good one for you today. A lot of you guys are rich trying to get a whole lot richer and you have the worst money mindset going into it, okay? You have to really tweak how you think along the way to maximize the amount that you're actually capable of making as you continue to grow financially. So to be clear, let me get started with the simplest thing that typically holds people back. Once again, after they get rich and then they're struggling to get a whole lot richer. Okay, to be clear, number one, and this is important, is you never adjusted the goals, okay? When it comes to goals, this could, as an example, be like you're just getting started you get all the way up to like 100K a month or something like that. Or, you know, maybe it gets like 200K a month. And that was previously big to you. That's typically what a goal is. A goal is something that we think is big at the time that we are coming up with the goal. So when we get to the point where we achieve the goal, or even when we get close to that goal, it's critical. It's not like an option. It's not something fun to do. It's like you have to do this. You have to adjust the thinking to be bigger to the next size up. Okay. If you fail to size up in terms of thinking, and once again, what you think you're going after next, the actual actions that follow it don't adjust either. Okay? So to be clear, everything starts everything starts in our head, okay? And it's and it's simple to understand. Our beliefs are what leads to our actions, okay? And in addition to that, our perspective is what we think is possible. Technically, what's possible, probable, what's gonna happen, it all comes down to perspective, okay? So to be clear, these two things I'm gonna break down for you so you understand it. Critical things to understand once again when it comes to money mindset. Beliefs lead to actions. And to be clear, our perspective leads to what we think is possible. So allow me to help you understand why this is important, okay? It all starts with the data that I consume. So at a certain point, if you reflect back on where you started at, you at one point likely heard some stories. You had some kind of data penetrate your senses, okay? You heard it, you saw it, you were talking to somebody about it, something happened where somebody told you something was possible and happening right then and there. Maybe heard somebody started a marketing agency or whatever the hell you do, and they were doing 100K a month with it, or they were doing a couple hundred grand a month with it. So you thought to yourself, you know, oh wow, man, if that guy can do it, there's no way I'm not gonna be able to do that. That's typically where it starts. There's somebody that you view as almost like inferior to you to a degree, that you're, you're kind of shocked they're even making that amount. Or somebody that you're inspired by, you know, that you look up to, but you think there's some kind of similarity between you and them. So you also view it as highly probable that you're you're capable of accomplishing it as well. Either way, whether you're looking at whoever accomplished it as inferior to you, almost like dumber than you, or whether you're looking at it as, okay, this person, I got a lot of similarities to this guy. Like I can for sure do that too. To be clear, in either scenario, the inspiration penetrated your senses. You had an idea that started to seed into perspective that started to lead to some beliefs about, okay, this specific business model can accomplish this amount of money. Now, to be clear, obviously there's a lot of stuff that happens after that. You have to accumulate a substantial amount of additional data, knowledge, awareness. You know, you start going to events, maybe you just start watching a ton of videos around these specific topics. You buy some courses, you read some books, whatever. You're talking to friends, you're in online groups, communities. It is what it is. You start the process, okay? And the process is obviously what got you to where you're at right now financially. You put in a lot of work, okay? And all that work led to the financial outcome that you've achieved, okay? Now, once you get to that point, think about it. Just think about that specific cycle that occurred. You have to recreate that same cycle when it comes to point number one here, okay? We have to be able to adjust the goals, which is essentially just a repetition of that same cycle cycle, which means I have to go out and seek new data for what's possible next. This is critical. Once again, if I fail to do this, you typically experience a lot of plateaus. You know, you just stop. You just plus or minus maybe a couple thousand, tens of thousands of bucks a month. You never really exceed what you're making if you fail to do this and repeat that same cycle. What is that cycle? Simply put, when you're already at that heightened financial level, you go out and you look for people who are making a fuck ton more money than you right now doing the same thing you're doing. And you try to find those two categories again. Who is dumber than me? That's making far more money than me that I could look at and be like, damn, dude, how the fuck is that guy doing that? Like, if he can do it, I can for sure do it too. Or the inspiration side of thing, which is you look at somebody who's making more money than you doing the same business model that you're running. And you say to yourself, well, dude, I mean, if they can do it, like I see a lot of similarities between them and me, I can for sure do it too. Like they're, they're at the point in their story where I feel like I can be in my future and they're in their past been where I am right now. I need to work with that person. I need to find that individual and I need to seek out what it is that they did to exceed my current cap that I'm at financially and hit their cap that they're, they're now operating at. Whichever side you go with, or whether it's both, you know, you have to find those stories, okay? You find those stories through books, through courses, through YouTube videos, through talking to people at events, through looking at people and what they're posting and bragging about online. You have to find these inspiration sources, okay? And I prefer to find both sides. I love looking at people who I think are just retarded, where I'm like, I can't believe that they're making that amount, you know? I love those stories, okay? They inspire me, they make me feel like I can accomplish so much more than what I currently am with 
ease, okay? And vice versa for inspiration. You know, one of my favorite inspirational stories, a guy named Rob Deerdeck. Rob Deerdeck was a skateboarder, smoked a ton of weed, got a DC deal with a company DC, uh, the skateboard company. And dude, you fast forward to where Rob's at today. I mean, to be clear, we use the same hypnotist, Dr. George Pratt out in La Jolla, California. You know, we both buy Ferraris and shit like that. You know, Rob is very accomplished. He is, at this point in his career, a venture capitalist. He gets paid several hundred thousand dollars per episode of ridiculousness on MTV or whatever network it's on nowadays. He has a net worth of a little over a couple hundred million dollars. And we're from the exact same city in Ohio here in the United States. On the inspirational side of things, I just constantly look at what Rob does and I think to myself, dude, he's just a few steps ahead of where I am right now. I can accomplish everything that Rob's doing and has done uh, you know, beyond skateboarding. I don't kick flip very well. <laughs> just a slightly different altered path. But my point being, it's like, dude, if he can do it, I can do it. You know, or like the Paul brothers, Jake and Logan Paul. I had the opportunity through some mentors where I worked out of their office in Hollywood, California in 2017 when I first got out there was building up my uh, my business out there where I got the opportunity to firsthand talk to and just observe Jake and Logan inside of a gym setting amongst other influencers. And they were top dogs for sure. But this was a different phase for both of those guys. They're not who you see them as today. As an example, like Jake Paul was sitting there an entire two hour workout with a personal trainer, the entire two hours. This dude was just saying, they don't want me to have the baby blue Lambo. They don't want me to have the baby blue Lambo. And he said that shit literally for a full two hours straight. I was like, this guy's a fucking psycho, I love it. I saw Logan Paul pull up in a, in a lifted G-Wagon and it had a snowmobile plow on the front of it. He gets out of the car, stands on the hood of the car. There's like a few girls there, like influencer girls. He has silly string for some reason. I don't know who's rolling around with silly string with a fucking snowmobile plow in the front of their G-Wagon. He pops out, gets on the hood, and just starts spraying silly string everywhere. And I thought to myself on the other side, I was like, dude, that guy's retarded. And I've watched what Logan Paul's done, and I think to myself, wow, this guy for sure, without exaggeration, just from what he's done with Prime, is probable to be a billionaire, or at least have a several multi-hundred million dollar net worth. Same logic, they're both from the same suburb area that I am in Ohio, right? You can look at guys like LeBron James. LeBron James also from that same suburb that I was in in Ohio, Akron. To be clear, these are three examples that I look at for both sides of this equation, where they're making so much more money than me. They're at the top of their game. They're much further along than I am. And they constantly are in my view, coming into my senses. I watch their accomplishments. I see what they do. I see the progress that they make. And on both sides of the equation, I think to myself, my God, I can make so much more money than I currently am right now. I also have people that are much closer to what I specifically do. I'll give you a great example. On the inspirational side, I have a guy named Judge Graham. Judge Graham sold two marketing agencies. He doesn't like me to talk about this specific number, but he sold one for mid-range eight figures, okay? So between zero dollars and a hundred and, and hundred million dollars, he sold it for mid-range eight figures. Okay, take a guess. And then he sold one for low nine figures. Okay, not to say the specific number, but somewhere between a hundred and two hundred million dollars. Okay, so he sold two marketing agencies for mid-range eight figures and low nine figures. Okay, Judge lives in Texas. He has a beautiful family. He's very calm. You know, he's still very entrepreneurial. I love Judge. Okay, he's somebody that quite literally right now on this video, if I picked up the phone and called him on a random Tuesday in the afternoon, he'd pick up his phone and he answered me. And I could ask Judge any kind of questions that I want. I could I could knock business opportunities off of Judge. I also, when I have somebody that wants to exit their marketing agency, refer them over to Judge to get them connected to investment bankers and just audit whether it's possible to sell or not. There's a lot of, a lot of huge inspirational side of things that comes into my senses from my conversations and my exposure and my observation of Judge, okay, and what I get to see with him. Now, he, once again, successful marketing agency owner exited twice gives me a different perspective on things because the way I run my marketing agency, I do it for the cash flow. I don't really want to sell the business. It just doesn't make much sense when I make as much as I do with as little time and effort as I do. And I get the cash flow that I get as a result of that. It just doesn't make sense. So to be clear, I still love, love talking, looking, observing what Judge does because it's inspirational to me as an agency owner, okay? There are also people out there that I look at. There's a there's an entire report that Judge actually put me onto called the Forrester Report. The Forrester Report is just huge marketing agencies that are making a ton of money, top of their specific fields that get audited by this review platform called the Forrester Report, and then they get recommended to work with top corporations, okay? I love when I can go look at a marketing agency's deal and see that they're charging a corporation, as an example, millions of dollars a month or high several hundred thousand dollars a month. My goal when I work with any type of client is to get paid a hundred thousand dollars a month in that deal off that one client. So when I see a bunch of other people out there that are charging 
high several hundred thousand dollars to literally millions of dollars a month per deal, I immediately think to myself, okay, what I'm doing is very possible, it's very probable, and it's much smaller in comparison to the people that I'm constantly looking at. That's what I'm talking about when I say I gotta adjust perspective because that leads to my beliefs. I now believe that that's possible, doable, and I've done it many times over because I pushed the right data through my senses, which adjusted my worldview, it adjusted what I viewed as probable and possible, okay? Therefore, that adjusted my goals. And as I got closer to my goals, as I hit my goals, as I exceeded my goals, I then do, I repeat the same process. I just adjust up. I just keep looking up, okay? Great example of that. There's a company, two brothers actually, called the Koch Brothers. C-O, I'm sorry, K-O-C-H, Koch Brothers. They have a great book, by the way, called Good Profit. Incredible read. These guys, they profit, meaning on a year over year basis, the revenue that their company produces is billions and billions of dollars, okay? Billions and billions of dollars. In some instances, a hundred plus billion dollars in profit from these guys. If you go look these guys up, cause you probably never even heard of them. These are just two brothers running a pretty simple business model. And when I look at that and I think to myself, okay, I'm trying to do a measly like $12 million a year. Okay, I'm trying to make a million dollars a month. When I hit $12 million in an annualized basis, that's my gross revenue, by the way. And I go over there and I look at these dudes that are producing hundreds of billions of dollars in profit. I think the exact number, to be fair, was like $119 billion in profit, to be clear. What they net for their bottom line. It's like, dude, I'm doing $12 million a year. That's small, a small fry. I am a small fry. I am a guppy. I am like a, a what is it, a little fucking shrimp, a, a piece of plasma in the ocean getting eaten by a whale in comparison to that. That perspective, when I legitimately go look at things like that, and I look at things like that constantly, dwarfs what I currently do. And this leads me to point number two, and this is critical. I wanna think big and I wanna feel small, okay? Thinking big, once again, is, is in itself just one of those perspective elements. It falls under this first category I talked about. But when I go out there and I'm constantly just trying to push the envelope for what I view as possible, and then I'm looking, talking, and observing things that are making me feel small, in my goals that I have when I'm thinking, I'm thinking big. That is the perfect duality to lead me to thinking, okay, it is it, it's extremely probable, extremely probable I'm gonna accomplish what I want to accomplish. Because although yes, I'm thinking bigger than where I'm currently at today, I'm making that think small, doable, realistic, possible, based on going out there and just dwarfing it by looking at the big dogs, okay? Critical to do. In addition to this, and this, you know, quick transition to point number three. I like to have accountability. I like to have people that I can have conversations with that reinforce these worldviews that I'm encouraging you to adopt into your thinking, okay? When I have accountability, like as an example, I do this for all my students, okay? My inner circle students especially because I have much more one-on-one -on -one exposure to these guys. When they come in, especially when they first get started, right? I had a guy, he was doing a million dollars a month already with his marketing agency. A million dollars a month. He was literally making more money than me. And he still entrusted me to be his mentor, okay? His name's Chris. Chris comes in and immediately, like, I'm, I'm just harping him. I'm like, dude, like, you have so much potential. This guy has hundreds of thousands of people that follow him on LinkedIn. He has a huge podcast. He, he's, he's charging nothing. Like, for the deals that he does with these big B2B deals, he is charging nothing. He's not charging rev shares. Per deal, I'm making more than what Chris does, but he makes more because he just does more in terms of volume and he has a big staff. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, Chris, what? Like, why the fuck are you charging so little? Like, what are you making people? And we break down like what his average client is making off of what he does in their businesses. And it's just a small percentage that he's charging for the overall value that he's adding to these people's organizations when he comes in and executes on behalf of their business as an agency. And you look at it and you're like, well, why, why weren't you thinking that way prior? Well, the guy had no accountability. He had nobody in his life that was just telling him like, dude, why are you playing the game so small? What are you doing? This guy within a week, within one week of being in my inner circle program, okay? He invested $2,000 at that point. It's $2,000 a month. He invests $2,000. Within a week, he adds $100,000 a month in recurring revenue to his marketing agency as a whole. So he added 1.2 million a year in annual recurring revenue, ARR, just in one week from somebody coming in. I didn't really do much. I didn't teach him, okay, hey, go do video pitches. Hey, like, go do this for client acquisition. I didn't do anything other than just say, dude, why in the fuck are you not charging more? That perspective that he got, as simple as it sounds, somebody who comes at you with some serious conviction, who's also doing it already. Keep in mind, what I've talked about prior to this point plays into this third point, okay? I can give him the perspective from a proven dude, I'm already doing it. Like, 
And he probably categorizes me in the, well, I'm not ready to sell. I'm not probable to sell my business. He probably looks at me, to be honest with you, as, dude, if this fucking dumbass guy can do this, why in the world is, as a serious business operator, like, Chris dwarfs me in comparison to how he operates at a business. But my point being is like, you need both sides. You need the people that you're inspired by. You need the people that you look at and you just say, this guy's a fucking dumbass. Like, I, if he can do it, I can do it too. And then you have that person also come to you and straight up say, why in the world are you not doing it right now? Why in the world are you thinking so small? Like when I have a student come to me and they say, I always ask them like, dude, what's your income goal? And they always tell me what I call a stair stepper goal, okay? What they'll do is they'll articulate themselves for where they're at now and th then they'll, they'll have the real goal. Like the real goal as an example might be the $1 million a month, okay? And then they'll, they'll have like these stair steppers where they won't actually talk to me at first about you know, what they really want. They're gonna talk to me about the first stair. So when I ask them, I'm like, what's your income goal? They'll be like, oh, I have an income goal of 100K a month. And I'm like, you wanna make a measly fucking $1.2 million a year? And they're like, they're like, no, nah, I mean, you're right. You know, that's, that's not what I really want is my like end goal. My end goal, I actually wanna make a million a month. And then I break down for them based on accountability. I'm like, dude, do you know the differences in what it takes to run a business that's only doing 100K a month versus a million dollars a month? It is substantial. It's substantially different. You're typically not gonna build a business that only does 100K a month and then just randomly be able to punch more into what's already there and scale it up to a million dollars a month. You have to have the model right at the beginning so you don't have to make drastic changes where you have to burn everything down and build it up again, okay? When you just start at the beginning with the model and as you go, you can just plug the right deals into it and it gets you up to that real goal not the stair step girl goal, but the real goal of a million dollars a month. Dude, you're doing everything far faster than you would if you have to go through a process of getting to several hundred thousand dollars a month, realizing that you're fucked and you can't scale it further, burning it down and having to rebuild it again from that point and going through those drastic contractions that most businesses do because they're not thinking big enough ahead of time. That type of perspective comes simply put from accountability that somebody like me provides or somebody like anybody you could bring into your life applies. You need a community of people too. One huge value add that I see amongst my inner circle students specifically is there's such a wide range of people in there. Like the lowest ones typically do anywhere from like 20K to like 50K a month. And I don't mean this disrespectfully to these guys, but like, dude, they're the small fries in the group and they love it. Like they love the fact that they're in an environment where there's people who do millions of dollars a month that they can just actively communicate with and talk to. And then vice versa for the guys doing millions of dollars a month. The guys doing millions of dollars a month, I'll bring in people all the time that are crushing these dudes. I brought in a guy the other day, he lost $700,000 in one trade. <laughs> Imagine how much he makes on some of his big trades if he lost 700K in one trade. It's just immediately like you see somebody that loses what you make in an entire month in profit, that loses it on a fucking gamble in the stock market or in Forex or some shit like that. And then you're over here working your ass off as an agency or whatever kind of business model is in this group that I'm talking about here. And, and dude, you see what I'm talking about? Like that kind of perspective is invaluable. The point I'm trying to make, it doesn't just have to come from one person. It typically comes from a group setting. I have my group every Saturday, we do a weekly call together and we share what we call our weekly wins. It's our positive propaganda amongst ourselves as a group. And dude, when you have a guy come in and he's like, oh yeah, I closed $300,000 in new business this last week. And then your weekly win is like, oh, I closed a new client for $2,000 a month. Like, what do you think that does to your psyche? You see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about when it comes to accountability. It's not just somebody sitting there constantly harassing you, telling you, you're thinking too small. Like, you need to think bigger, you need to be bigger, you need to do bigger, you know? It's also the fact that when you're just surrounded by data that constantly is just, like I said, making you think big, but you feel small, dude, huge money mindset hack, okay? Huge money mindset hack. Now, final thing I wanna go over in this video, there's truly dozens and dozens of things I could sit here and talk to you about, but I got shit to do, you got shit to do, so I'm gonna wrap it up with this point, okay? Last impactful money mindset tip for you, when you go out there in the world, okay, and you start to process that cycle repeatedly, where, okay, I'm gonna think big, I'm gonna feel small, I'm gonna put a bunch of data into my senses that helps reinforce the worldview that I wanna have, okay? You also need to have people that you look at where you just wanna do the polar opposite of how they live and what they do, okay? Polar opposites, I'll give you some examples on Twitter or X, whatever you wanna call it nowadays, where you have, you have polar opposite inspiration sources, okay? For me as an example, polar opposite. <laughs> I don't know how to spell, I guess, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say, to be clear, I have these guys on Twitter and I can't even think of them off the top of my head, but I'll give you some examples of the tweets that I see from these dudes. They'll tweet some shit like how having a paid off Camry is better than having cars like this, okay? And it is just comical. It's like, there, I, there's this one guy, he lives in a trailer. He lives in a double wide trailer. He has a family and he's, he's like posting pictures of what he buys for his groceries. 
He talks about how he makes like, I think it's like a couple grand a month in, in uh, investment income. Cause he only invested like, it was like high couple hundred thousand or like maybe he exceeded a million in his total invested amount that pays him passively. And oh my God, it's just hilarious. Like he invested so little that his life now as a retiree is so limited. It's like nowhere near what I would want. It is the polar opposite. It is the exact like representation of what I want to avoid. Like I put up several hundred grand into investments in a month continuously to avoid that exact type of lifestyle. I don't wanna be the dude that's fucking 50, 60 years old, or even worse, younger, that's sitting there saying like, oh dude, my shitbox Honda Civic is better than a new <laughs> fucking Ferrari. You know, it's like, no, that's not true. That's not the case. That's not even close to what I wanna be, but I need to see that. You know, I need to see it so I can witness the ramifications of their money mindsets. I need to see the opposite of how I think, and I need to know that I, I'm working towards the type of future that's gonna be real, that's gonna be what I want to experience, and that's gonna make me you know, constantly reminded of the fact that I'm doing the right things, okay? I need essentially reminders that I'm on the right path. And I think, once again, looking at polar opposites, I am very connected to people that I grew up with that are still inside of that city, that work just super regular jobs. And I wanna be clear when I say this, I don't demean these people's lives, meaning I don't sit here and and like think they're unhappy. I don't think that like they're doing the wrong thing. Like they're doing the right thing for them. You know, that's what they wanna do. That's how they want life to be. That's what they wanna experience. That's great. I don't look at them as like less than what I am to be clear. I don't have that kind of perspective when I do this. Simply put, I just look at their lives and I look at the decision making behind that life. And I'm just, I'm just reminded constantly of, dude, I don't wanna be like that at all. I don't wanna experience that. I don't wanna live like that. I don't want that kind of result. What are they doing that's causing that? And I wanna do the opposite, <laughs> okay? And I wanna be reminded of, that is, that is why I'm doing the way, that is why I'm thinking the way I am, that's why I'm doing what I am, that's why things are the way they are for me, is because I'm doing the things, I'm thinking the way I am. I'm, I'm, I'm once again, I'm, this process that I'm laying out for you here is getting me the result that I want. And once again, the process that they're working through is getting the result that they got, which is not what I want, okay? Now, I will pepper in one little bonus tip which I think is also very important. You gotta validate how you are, okay? So just along the lines of polar opposites, validation is critical. Okay, so for me, and it's different for everybody, but like for me specifically, like dude, when I can roll around in like a $300,000 car, like it's casual, you know, like scratch a rim or something and it doesn't break my psyche. It's like, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it validates the fact that I'm a rich dude, you know? When I can go and like casually, like I bought a pair of brown shoes the other day, and I saw this very, it's, it's a vintage 1977 day date. It was cheap. To me, it was cheap, okay? And I literally bought it just to match my brown shoes. That was a nighttime purchase where typically I'm more impulse oriented with my purchases. But at the same time, it's like, as dumb as that sounds and how irresponsible it sounds like, you know, it didn't impact me negatively. That helped validate the fact that I'm doing the right things, okay? This, once again, this is my second house. I rented this place because in the summertime, it's hot. I'm sitting here outside right now, I'm, I'm a little glazed. But right down the road, you know, three, four blocks, I got a highly walkable area with a lot of food. It's a lot better in the summertime than spending time at the mega mansion over there where I'm just isolated, you know? I can go ride ATVs, ride horses, just spend time inside, but it's not as enjoyable in comparison to a highly walkable area. Just being able to have a second house, you know? And just in the same city, as ridiculous as that sounds. That's validation, you know? It gives me the perspective, like, all right, I'm doing the right things. When I can do things for other people too, when I can like bonus my staff or like pay for my mom's medical stuff, you know, or like pay for their mortgage or something, or, you know, help my family in different ways or help random people, just do something charitable. It's like whatever it is that you specifically have in your category of, okay, this helps validate that I am the type of person that I want to grow into being, I want you to understand those things pull you into being that person on a continuous basis. They make it regular, they normalize things. The more you can normalize the behavior that you wanna see in your future self and just make it real today, you're quite literally every time you do that, pulling yourself more and more into that future character. You're expanding yourself every time you make a decision like that. So to be clear, I hope all these tips help you as much as they've helped me. They've sure made up a, a hell of a difference in my life. And like I said, there's always additional things that I could talk about well beyond this that make a huge difference. And I'm always happy to share those things with you guys. I appreciate it if you like, comment, subscribe, and per usual, my selfish plug. Look, you need the right kind of mentor in your life. You need somebody like me that's gonna help push you up to that next level. And I got your back. You join into my Inner Circle program, it's 2K a month. 
It's very cost effective. You got to make a minimum of 15K a month to join in there. To be quite frank, once again, the lowest people in that group typically make like 20 to 50K a month. Most of them are already doing several hundred thousand dollars a month, about more than half the groups at at least 100K a month. Several guys in there doing millions of dollars a month. We do weekly group calls on Saturday, twice a month one-on-one -on -one calls, four times a year masterminds. We do them at the mansion over here in Miami. Uh, so four times a year you get to show up for that for our two-day masterminds in person. You can stream them remote. We got people from all over the world. We got people in the US, Canada, South American countries, European countries, Australia. Like We got people from all over that fly out for this shit. To be clear, I'm always excited to help and welcome in another qualified individual into the group who sees the value of it. If it's right for you, there's a link in the description and I look forward to welcoming you in. And uh, per usual, man, you got any questions, you got anything that you want me to elaborate on, any videos, video ideas, drop a comment, I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks.